Hello, and welcome to an impromptu Paula Live. We have Tatiana Moroz joining us. She is an amazing uh, artist, singer, songwriter, and I'm so happy uh, that we're connected from South America. Hello, Tatiana. Hey, how's it going? Oh, great. Uh, you, you made my day for agreeing to come on and sharing your music. And uh, I'm one of your biggest fans. I love playing it. I, I love sharing it. Oh, well, thank you. I'm really happy to be on today. We haven't talked in a little while. I know. Um, you're uh, still way down south. Uh, can you uh, tell everyone what you're doing down there? Uh, yeah, sure. I am in uh, Buenos Aires. I was just here for the first ever Latin American Bitcoin conference. So that was really exciting. Um, I've just been kind of traveling around. I was in Chile for a little while, which uh, was beautiful. But I have to say that there's a lot of excitement here in, in Argentina. And um, the reason why I was at the Bitcoin conference is because I wrote a Bitcoin song. Uh, now that I'm getting a little bit more educated about it, I think that there's, um, you know, there's a lot to be learned. And there's a lot of hope and answers within this, uh, even if Bitcoin itself weren't to succeed, the concept is out there and cryptocurrencies are a way that people can liberate themselves from the state and from manipulated money. So it's really inspiring and really cool for me to be down here and learning all about that stuff. Awesome. Wonderful. I, I know just what I've heard. Uh, Bill Steele has come on, Cat Waters and uh, Reality Bites and talked about it and I know there's uh, several others starting to follow suit with Bitcoin like uh, Quack I think it's Quack Quark and, uh, <laughs> Quark <laughs> it's mm -hmm. funny the R on my typewriter uh, sticks or my computer sticks typewriter god how old am I and, <laughs> and I'm, I, I tend to leave it out of my words too <laughs> well uh, let's let's share your song here for a moment and uh, sure. see what's up. I didn't want to give any of my money to a nation based on war. I wanted to be free, nothing holding me back from where I want to go. I thought about it, I thought about it. What was the choice that I made? Was you take away the money? Don't give up your money, use Bitcoin whenever you pay, use Bitcoin whenever you pay. I didn't want to waste any of my time working for the government. I wanted to be kind, open up my mind, just like an instrument. Wow, that's amazing. Um, you and I were just talking about it. I, I had, had mentioned that my son had bought some when it was about 25 bucks uh, each, and uh, he actually sold one to buy Christmas, and uh, which means he has a pile of gifts for uh, out of pocket $25. And I'm so jealous. I wish I had have done it at the same time. <laughs> Well, like I said, you could still buy fractional pieces. So if people want to get involved and they don't have, you know, the coins are about, I think, $900 today. So if people can't buy them today, they can buy a little portion and just see what happens with it. 
you know, the thing that I thought that was really cool about Bitcoin was it's a way of pulling out of the state, withdrawing your consent in a way that they really can't control. And, um, and that's how you can potentially defund all the rampant wars that are going on. Oh, good point. That's a good way to put it, too. And I know that, you know, um, even uh, the state is really trying to do everything they can. It's the jealousy. They see people are actually tired of what's out there for us to use as currency today. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's working when they're scrambling to do everything they can to stop it. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, there's there's a lot of elements um, where Bitcoin really just can't be stopped. Um, the network is really large, and it's and it's defined by all the different users. So even if it were to be banned in the United States, that doesn't mean that it can't be viable in other places. Um, in a place like Argentina, where the currency is very unstable, where the government is uh, very corrupt, it's very appealing. So I think that might be why the conference was such a huge success here. I mean, it was completely sold out. There were amazing speakers from all over the world, and it was very energetic. So, very They're cool. They're tired of it. They're tired of of struggling so hard, and it's almost like you know the the old um, uh, company store where people work for this company, and then they end up buying so much at the store on credit to where at the end of the week they still owe the company part of that and they never get away from it yeah it's uh the state is uh, uh this company store to me and they they don't have anything to back it up i really hope it goes uh even even higher and all it all all things indicate it is going to do that i think so i mean there's going to be some volatility of course but yes it does seem to be doing really well wow are you going to stay there for a while in South America? Um, I am on my way home. Um, what am I leaving? I'm leaving on Thursday of next week, the 19th. So um, I'm going to be flying back to New Jersey, unfortunately. As much as I love it down here, I, I do miss my family and friends. Yeah. So that'll be, that'll be that. I'm going to go back to Chile on Monday for a few days and just say goodbye to a few friends. And then... Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of big, big things planned for next year. I have an event that I'm performing at the weekend of January 17th through the 19th, um, Liberty, uh, no, Save Long Island. So that's, that's out in Long Island. A friend of mine, she's doing that Long Island Forum. I think that's what they're calling it. And then um, I'll be at the Bitcoin conference in Miami. There's just a number of different, different things that I'm going to be participating in. So um you know, I've got a really hectic year. I'm going to be out in San Francisco. I might do some talks um, with one of the girls from the Bitcoin Foundation. We're kind of trying to show women um, who I found out are the majority of the, they manage the household income. And they also are the majority of small business owners. So I think that they could potentially benefit from something like Bitcoin. And I'm trying to come up with creative ways of educating people about this technology and of course, you know, I'm fighting for liberty and freedom, the usual things. So there's a lot, a lot going on. Yes, you are so busy. You even last year, you, you were everywhere, <laughs> one well, place <laughs> after another. And uh, we really appreciate everything you do. And then oh, in well, the meantime, you, you write and produce these beautiful songs. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm really excited, I think, for the new year. You know, I'm trying to raise money right now on my website. Um, but for the new year, I'm planning on releasing another record. I have it all written. I almost have probably two albums worth of material. So, awesome. yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of music to be made still, and I'm looking forward to getting in the studio. If I could get the right budget, hopefully, you know, that'll work out. I can do it with a full band. And, you know, I have some creative ways on... I was thinking I would maybe try and do the entire album on Bitcoin, but I'm still kind of firming that up. But yeah, I mean, I think that, I don't know. I think that there's just a lot of, a lot of really great things in the world that I'm happy to be able to do a lot of my dreams right now. That really means so much. It really does something to your heart to be working on things that you, you truly believe in and truly care about. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. And and you know, I think that the reception from so many people um, is has been so warm and just you know, I feel like I found a family within the liberty movement, and now subsequently um, in the Bitcoin family. I mean, whatever. I'm still pretty new to those people, but everybody was really nice and and really cool this weekend. And there's a lot of overlap. Um, so you know, there's there's just a lot of excitement for the new year, and I'm I'm happy to be be able to travel and play music. And we are so happy you are too. I cannot wait to get my hands on that new album. <laughs> can you share with us where you can be contacted, where people can make donations, and where they can find your uh, music? Oh yeah, sure. Um, people can find me at TatianaMoroz.com. That's sort of the hub of all my information. Um, and, yeah, basically uh, on YouTube, there, that new Bitcoin song is up there, but a whole bunch of my music is up there. Forevermore Tatiana. I'm on Twitter, Queen Tatiana. And, of course, I'm on Facebook with Tatiana Moreau's music. So I'm all over the place. People can hear me anytime. Awesome. You guys know where to get this music now. Go out there and get it. You'll be glad you did. Um. You also have shared with some uh, some Christmas songs. Oh, yeah. I had a Christmas album last year. Unfortunately, I couldn't record any new Christmas music because I'm not, you know, in New York. Um, but kind of busy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little busy, but that doesn't mean that I'm not making mu- music or anything. So uh, yeah, we could, get you, you know. Busy, and the- then that makes you stop that because you have yeah. a voice like an angel and a talent just straight from heaven. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was uh, very fortunate to get to meet uh, Tatiana and see her live for the first time in Nashville. And uh, wow, she sure did make an impression on me. I had to write her name down. I was I was just not going to forget this name <laughs> to get the music. I, uh, unbeknownst to me, just everyone else in the world already knew who she was. I think this is what happens when you're a mom and you're kind of closed off a bit, you know. <laughs> well, the uh, more and the more they hear about it, the better, of course. I'm psyched. Well, not only do you have a beautiful voice, but you are also a very beautiful lady, and um, the crowd just gravitates. And just when you came on stage, how everybody kind of moved up, that <laughs> I knew something good was coming. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, yeah, that was a really, really fun event. I hope I can make it down to Nashville again soon. And Atlanta, for that matter. I, I did a show down there. I don't know. The oh, Southern I saw you there as well. Oh, yeah, that was really fun. The Southern Contingent is just a blast. I love all those folks down there. Yes, I'll be with Barbie Dunn this weekend at a, a redneck red carpet event. <laughs> oh, really? I hope that you give her, give her my best and, and wish her a happy holiday for me, please. Oh, I definitely will. Should we pause a bit and share one of your songs, a uh, Christmas sure. song? Sure, Which that one sounds would good. would you like to go uh, first? Um, let's do the Green Sleeves Medley. That's always nice. It's a it's a, Come Away With Me, which um, is from the, the movie How the West Was Won. And I did sort of a medley with that and Green Sleeves. So I, I always think that's really pretty and sort of holiday-ish. Wonderful. This is Come Away With Me by Tatiana Excuse me, song by Tatiana. Away, away, come away with me Where the grass grows wild, where the winds blow free Away, away, come away with me And I'll build you a home in the meadow
The stars, the stars so how bright they'll shine On that home we will build in the meadow For the willing hand Come, come There's a wondrous land Where I'll build you a home In the meadow Discourteously, for I have loved you well and long, delighting in your company. Green sleeves was all my joy, green sleeves was my delight. live with Tatiana Moroz. Wow, uh, you have such an amazing voice. What a beautiful song. Oh, well, thank you. I, I love that um, that whole little series that I did. I did a little EP called For the New Year. People can get it, you know, online on YouTube and I mean, not YouTube, uh, iTunes and Bandcamp and a few other places. Um, but yeah, I, I love that song. And, and I love that how that whole record came out. My producer, um, Will Hensley up in New York is basically um, the greatest thing since sliced bread. I, I love working with him, and you know he always makes me sound good. We, we're really, really efficient. Yes, well, I don't think a lot of it's him, <laughs> <laughs> but he must be amazing well, at what you. he does. Your recordings are so clear and, and concise. Oh well, thank it, you. Yeah, and he plays all the guitars. I used to play the guitar on the recordings, but let's face it, I'm not you know the world's greatest guitar player. He's just uh, really puts a lot of classy stuff on there, and, and he makes me sound really good. Awesome. Kudos to this guy. Is there any more uh, anything else you'd like to share with us about Bitcoin? Um, not really. Oh, well, actually, you know what? There was this really cool thing in the holiday spirit. Um, there's a company called BitGive, and I just wanted to, to get people aware of what they're doing because – I think that sometimes people think that liberty people, because they're sort of capitalist, they don't have a sense of charity. Um, I completely disagree with that. I think that they're much more concerned about the well-being of people because um, once you learn about Austrian economics, if you have a free market, you have a much better chance of lifting up the people um, from poverty. There's a great book um, by, oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, the guy who, John Mackey from Whole Foods. <sighs> And, um, and he talks a little bit about that, but, um, anyway, I, I met with, um, Connie Gallippi from BitGive when I was down here and she was telling me basically about how they, they vet the charities and you can donate your Bitcoins and then they'll deliver them to the charities, um, on your behalf. So I think that that's something that people can kind of, um, participate in, and it's and it's good for for Bitcoin and, and the Liberty Movement overall, just to show a little bit of a warmer side. Um, and uh, so many people made so much money off of Bitcoin recently, so there's been a lot of donations going to her. And I know that they're they want some more. They did something with Bitcoin Not Bombs, which is another great organization that raises awareness for nonprofits that that use Bitcoin, um, and it can be sort of an investment. Uh, the U.S. dollar obviously is is um, losing value on a daily basis, little by little. 
And um, Bitcoin is going up. Even when it goes down, it's going up because it's still holding a lot more value than just a, a few months ago. And I know that there's a lot of different companies participating, but there is a warm side to it. It's not just a raffle. And you can participate by, by you know, checking out companies like BitGive and Bitcoin Not Bombs. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a whole open world of people who have Bitcoin who want to spend it. So I don't know. I'm, I'm super Bitcoined out right now. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I think it's an amazing Christmas gift. Anyone that wants to buy me some, oh, go to school right yeah. <laughs> Exactly. It's a gift that keeps on giving, hopefully. Absolutely. Well, maybe we should go to another song. Let's see yeah, sure. That sounds good. That's perfect timing because my, my repair guy just got here. Oh, wonderful. Um, we'll go to Lonely Christmas. Okay, that sounds good. And I'll see you in a bit. Get through the year But then Christmas Came along I thought I could See a glimmer Of hope I wanted to write A happy song But it eludes Me that Christmas Spirit When a house can Leave the lights off, I'm alone Am I supposed to believe in love When a family claims that one is dead Those false words coupled with memories Leaves me spinning in my head It eludes me That Christmas spirit When a house can't be a home Don't confuse me Christmas spirit Leave the lights off I'm Christmas and you haven't got a place to call home don't be afraid and worry cause he'll be there waiting when you make your own I don't have the answer though I'd like to make a gift of it if I could Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of Christmas songs that are like, oh, my family's so great, the holidays are so wonderful, but, you know, there's a lot of depressed people around the holidays, and I I felt, you know, I've been depressed around the holidays, and it's really hard when you have this pressure from everybody to be all happy, and you see all these perfect little families and everything, you know, not everybody has that, so when I wrote that, I wanted to write a song for the people that aren't super cheery and 
living in the little perfect ho, ho, ho kind of lifestyle. So, um, you know, hopefully I can bring them a little bit of comfort and there is that element of hope there. And, um, but I, I don't want to force anybody to, to feel all happy. So I think that's a little bit of a sad song, but maybe it can bring people some comfort as well when things exactly. aren't going perfect. Yeah, exactly. Realizing that they're not the only one that uh, feels even more sad at this time of year. Yeah, and I think there are a lot of, de- you know, there's a lot of depressed people around the holidays because it's almost like it forces you to take stock of everything. And, and you know, there's a pressure on the family in general. You know, everybody's got their own crazy family members and, and everything like that. So I think that, you know, I was I was happy when I made that song, even though I guess it's not the most cheery. Well, you know, in the United States, the middle class, I would... I would like to say is slowly disappearing, but it's rapidly disappearing. And um, I know I I struggle with me and my children. It's like I could almost use that big long month, and I could use that money and just about get caught up. But now I feel like I've got to buy Christmas presents. Well, I think that um, you know people shouldn't feel that pressure, you know, or or try and resist that over commercialized pressure. And I think that this year probably there, the sales are not going to be very good. Not, not the sales in the stores, but you know, um, the, the, you know, the, yeah, I guess the sales that they make, I I don't think that people are going to be going to the store as much, you know, and, and people have been kind of going in that direction for a while now. So I think that that might be taking a little bit of the pressure off of the family only because, it's been so many years that we're in this really bad financial slump. I mean, depression, basically. So, um, Absolutely. hopefully, people are are not going too crazy with buying all the the different junks and stuff. Well, there's so many uh, people that are so talented making jewelry and and different things. They make their own furniture. There's so many places to buy other than these big corporations. Yeah, well, you know, that's absolutely true. Last night, I was walking around in Buenos Aires um, with a friend of mine. We went to dinner. You know, everybody here goes to dinner at like 11 o'clock at night. It's crazy. I don't know. Or 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, that kind of thing. Um, kind of I mean, there like are people. Radio dinner by the time we get oh, all yeah. there to eat. Well, you know, it, it was funny because it's literally like you could go out to dinner at 1 o'clock in the morning and nobody looks at you funny. So I was walking around and I saw these really beautiful um, handmade uh, headbands with these little roses on them. You're going to start seeing me performing in them because they're so pretty. I bought them specifically for the stage. I got one of every color. And the woman was making it all herself by hand. And I got one for my sister-in-law. Hopefully she's not listening um, for Christmas. And, you know, obviously I'm not really... I'm not working exactly. I don't have like a formal job right now, just, you know, doing music and stuff. So I don't want to spend too much on the holidays. (laughs) No, but it was so cool that I got to buy something that was original and handmade and made with love. Um, So I think that, that people can be a little bit creative. I know that Etsy has a ton of really cool stuff that people are buying for the holidays. And that's how you support um, local artisans and local craftspeople, and and you get something I think that's a little bit more fun than whatever you would get in Target. Not that I have a problem with Target because I like Target, but I think that you can get some really funky, fun stuff and and buy it directly from the artist. And I think that that has a little bit more, um, just a little bit more something, you know, a little bit I do more too, because each piece is an original. Absolutely. And you make that artist happy, and so you're su- supporting the community. So it's been really great. The art down here in South America, overall, the culture is so vibrant. Um, but uh, especially the handmade jewelry here is just really, really beautiful. So I'm hoping today to get away from the computer, which is hard for me, and um, and and just kind of work on some work on uh, doing a little bit of Christmas shopping and checking out the city. Since I'm going home soon, I haven't really checked anything out. So today I think I'm going to roam the streets. Oh, great idea. I know last Mm -hmm. Christmas was the poorest Christmas of my life. And, oh, my gosh, I was so worried about it. And to see the kids, you know, and they're in this Christmas spirit. And 
everything and I worried all night long you know when they see just how depleted this tree is from the year before and you know it was starting to get smaller and smaller and I thought you know I got some really good kids and I'd love to be able to buy them all the you know newest latest things but just can't do it and uh, Christmas morning came and they rushed down and were totally excited and I couldn't tell they were missing anything and, and it really made my heart just like wow and my my 14 year old uh, well, 13 year old last year he refused to make a Christmas list he said I know things are hard and I just really want us you know to be able to get by and I was like wow wow that's so nice give me a so couple nice. of hints and he's like you know mom if you do get me something I'm gonna love it so you know. oh <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, that's, I think, uh, that's, you must have raised your kids right if that's their attitude. I think some of the kids in America, they're brainwashed by the, the boob tube and, and they're, you know, I mean, whatever. Everybody likes toys. Everybody likes presents. But that was really, you must have raised him right if, he's, if that's his attitude on it. And I'm glad that they had a good time and, and that the Christmas spirit isn't being lost in the commercial spirit. Absolutely. Because I've, I've seen some lists on Facebook of what these kids want, and I can't find anything on them I could actually afford for my kid. These these games and these electronics and all this new stuff coming out and the price tags. I mean, who's going to be able to buy this stuff? Uh, so oh, many people I don't... are struggling. And they'll put it on a credit card and just throw themselves further in debt. And um, it's crazy. It's insane. I don't well, think there's... it's about commercialism at all, but I want to give something to show. I love and appreciate you today. I'm going to take a little extra and, and make it special for you too kind of thing. But there's not going to be any big uh, game machines or anything like that. And one mm. thing I think is because um, we just don't watch the television. My youngest will put on videos um, that he rewinds a certain part over and over. He's severely autistic and stuff like movie logos they're so popular with autistic children just the entrance i guess it's that dun, 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 and the searchlights and all that captures the attention um or maybe some subliminals that are still i'm i'm convinced uh mixed in with all that but um so i think once these kids see all these commercials on the television it's like oh my god i gotta have it i gotta have it and um, getting away from the TV kind of helped, I think. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I haven't watched TV except for Sons of Anarchy um, for months while I'm down here because I can't stream anything. And you know what? I don't really miss it. I feel like maybe one day when I just feel like vegging out, um, uh, that, that'll be the day. Not that I don't that, that I can catch a movie up. or something now and then, but the TV's not on so much we someone asked us if it was broke <laughs> oh really that's funny we don't need it <laughs> said, well, yeah well the know, holidays are nice <laughs> uh, well the holidays are nice for for you know wizard of oz and it's a wonderful life even though i don't even like that movie but i guess i'm just kind of used to seeing it but you know those holiday movies are kind of nice to, to watch with the family and stuff like that but um yeah the tv is is pretty violent a lot of the times i mean i i just watch Sons of Anarchy and I really really like that show but it's it's just so violent and miserable that it's it's hard to watch sometimes and uh, I don't know I just wish that they were a little bit different with their approach to television these days it just seems like there's a lot of violence even the shows that are really good like I like I love I like Breaking Game of Bad. Thrones and boy, Game of Thrones <laughs> of course right but like I mean I wish that it was they could make good shows that weren't just and I'm sure that they can, but I guess maybe they're just desensitizing people. I'm not sure. I wonder, you know, if there was like just a network that put not all the bad things, because to me, that's kind of propaganda. Mm -hmm. And people see this; they they feed off of it. They want to hear the bad things that's happened in other people's country. And I wonder if a station that would say. Guess what happened today? This boy chased down a car when he saw a girl abducted and rescued her. That type of news, you know. Wait, what? People, what was this news? Oh wow! Uh, recently, I can't remember where it happened, but it's on my Facebook wall. If you scroll down a bit, a young man saw 
a little girl being abducted, and he jumped on his bicycle and chased the car uh, while getting help to rescue this little girl, and she wasn't harmed. Oh, wow. That's, see, that's... you just don't see that. People, yeah. I don't know if it makes them feel better about their life. Oh, thank God I don't live there. Or thank God that's not happened to me today. You know, mm -hmm. to, to hear the bad news. You know, the dirty laundry. Oh, yeah. We need dirty laundry. Oh, gosh. But I wonder if it would be popular. Um, you know, I don't know. Do. I'd like to see someone try it. Yeah, well, we'll see. I think that there is a website, like goodnews.com or something like that, and it has all good news, but I guess if it's not that famous, then maybe it's not doing that well. I don't know. <laughs> well, you just got someone else to go there. Because <laughs> I'd much rather... Oh, I don't, know if that's, I don't know if that's what it is, but there's a website oh. that's something similar to that. Mm -hmm. If I Google it, it may pull it up. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, just it's just crazy, and, and I think a lot has to do with television... And, and, you know, these these crimes, parents are working, both parents are working, and some of them more than one job, and there's no family time. They get home, they've got laundry, they got to cook, they got to get ready to do it again in the morning, and and uh, latchkey kids and, uh, and uh, kids taking care of each other, I think it plays a part in, in some of the the violence and things. Yeah, well, you know what? That's uh, that's just the way it is. But I don't think that that's the way it has to be. That's why, you know, I'm trying to do music and and programming. You know, I really want to do videos next year and um, kind of preparing for it. You know who's really great is Jeffrey Tucker. He's. Have you ever listened to him at all? He is no, the no. most positive person on the planet. And just being around him is like a total pleasure. So um, I, I hope to interview him, and, and that should be a fun thing. But he has a really great way of looking at things in the world, even though things look like they're bad, and just finding the absolute best in everything. And I really admire that about him. So um, well, Definitely we'll be know. looking him up. Yeah, yeah, featuring people like that I think will be, will be part of what I want to kind of – kind of focus on is, is solutions, even though there are a lot of problems. I think that, you know, even though I found out so much more, I found out so many bad things in the past year or so <laughs> with, with Liberty Movement, just waking up to a lot of negativity. But at the same time, there's so much inspiration and so many people fighting back and in so many different ways that it really, it gives me a, a really great sense of accomplishment and um, hope more than anything, especially obviously with, with, um, with finding real solutions. You know, Cat Blaish and John Bush, they have something called Sovereign Living, and I think if people Google it, I think it's like Sovereign Living TV or something. But they are not asking for permission of the state. They have a really beautiful family. They started a farm. They're activists down in Austin, and they're actually producing their own television programming all about how to live sustainably and how to, you know, they're, they're really into peaceful parenting and stuff like that. So it's things like that that really um, that are really inspiring. Or um, even you know, I met um, Angela Keaton this year. We became friends, and you know, she's writing for Antiwar.com, and she's so educated. And even though she knows a lot of depressing news, it's just really cool to see such a strong woman kind of pushing against the system. So as long as people keep pushing back, I think that there's a lot of hope, and we shouldn't. We shouldn't only focus on the negative because the positive is is that it's spurring people to action. Absolutely. Um, I know in, yeah. the, in the truth movement, especially us in radio or the people who are out there talking, we, we try to um, get it out there to tell people, no, this is really happening. This is happening right now. And we spend all day on that. You know, Before I go to bed at night, I've got to just wipe my mind and, and pull some positive thoughts. I know this information has to get out. I know people have to know it, and I feel it's my job to help do that. But um, I'm going to be contacting uh, some some of these people and and uh, try to get some really good shows that, you know, that hopefully leave people with a smile on their face and hope in their heart. Yeah, I think so. I think that's really important, especially, 
you know, I don't think that things are going to get much better in the U.S. anytime soon. So why should we all have poison in our minds and in our hearts? Uh, there's got to be a way that we can keep keep it together, you know, and uh, and and not lose hope and not lose um, faith that we can make a difference. So, you know, we've got we've got a big year ahead of us. So we've got to keep our heads on straight. I guess is is where I'm going with that. Well said. Should we go to another song? Yeah, sure. That sounds great. Which one should we do? Um, oh, you know what? Why don't we play the Polish song? There's a song in Poland that's my favorite Polish song, and it's for the, for the holidays. Um, my friend Caleb Leverett, is a, it's, this is like his favorite song, um, but he, even though he doesn't know what it means. But it's really, really pretty. So um, it's called Lulajze Jezuniu. It's like a lullaby for, for Jesus. Oh, goodness, I'm never going to be able to pronounce that. (laughs) Here it is, folks. amazing that's so beautiful your voice is is just so concise did you have any voice training um yeah no I've been singing since I was a little girl I don't know I've never been a practicer so I bet if I was um you know a little bit more disciplined I guess I would probably be a little bit better but um when I was younger my um my dad would take me to voice lessons for a few years from I don't know 11 to 14 kind of thing and then I would do a lot of different plays and and the musicals at school and choir and stuff like that. And then um, I went to Berklee College of Music up in Boston. So I got quite an education up there. Well, actually, I don't know if that's true. Because I feel like you can kind of skate by at Berklee and not really work that hard and still get good grades because they just want to make money. But um, I don't know. True. I think Berkeley is a really great environment for certain people. And there were certain things that I really appreciated about my education there. But at the same time, you know, I know that right now it's $200,000. And somebody wrote me the other day on Facebook, oh, you know, I saw that you went to Berkeley. You know, should my kid go? I'm like, no, not for $200,000. They shouldn't. Get a couple music books. Send them to a regular school. The the good thing is, is the prestige that comes from the name. And you do have a lot of contacts. And the education is good. But I don't think that it's always, first of all, the music industry has no money. 
Um, so it's very, very difficult to make it. And I think that if you invest $200,000 in your own singing career, you have a much better chance than sending $200,000 just going to a school. Because then you could just hire people and do it right. And you educate yourself with an internship or with an apprenticeship type thing. So I don't know. Oh, I guess that's, that's great advice. A side topic. Yeah, but um, I'm sure that Berkeley wouldn't appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I went to Berkeley in California, but not as a oh. student, just to visit. So, <laughs> <laughs> But at funny. least I could say I went to Berkeley and, and I didn't have to pay anything. Mm, that's funny. Yeah, people campus, always get so. confused. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be out in California next month hanging with some of my Bitcoin friends, so I'll, I'll have to check it out. Oh, if you... Uh, Visit it if you get a chance. It's amazing. And then the, there's a, uh, their main thoroughfare. I wish I could think of the name of it. Everyone there can tell tell you. There is a uh, vintage store that is out of this world. And like in Florida, if we go to a vintage store, I'm looking at uh, only female clothing. But there's also mm -hmm. male clothing, shoes, purses, jewelry. And it's huge. Oh and wow! I'd you'll much have rather to, you'll buy have to something. Message. Oh yeah, I, I, I'd much rather buy. I bought uh, three pairs of boots. One was ten dollars. One was five dollars. One was six dollars. I'm still wearing them, and uh, I bought a few dresses. I wished I had uh, brought a little more money for me. I didn't realize I was going to be shopping while I went. Hmm. And I try to do everything with cash because I. Let's face it, the credit cards, by the time you pay for what you've charged, think of the pr the end price of what you're bringing home. Yeah, Is absolutely. Is it worth that? If you had the cash, would you pay that for the item you picked up? I don't think that people think of that. I mean, I got into a lot of credit card debt when I was younger and, and just trying to support my music career or whatever. And, you know, you always think, oh, next year is going to be better, especially, you know, they target the college kids. And college kids have no clue about anything. They think that, oh, they're going to be making, you know, 50 grand a year when they get out of school, which isn't even that much. Um, uh, but, I mean, the prices for everything have gone up so significantly that it's just really difficult um, to, to pay those kinds of bills back. And people don't really realize it when they, when they set themselves up. And I think that, the, well, I know that the banks target those kinds of kids. I think they do too. I think there is, uh, you know, you can see it on the television. Yeah. Just, well, no, I mean, they go to the campuses too. They say, you know, they, they try and give the kids credit cards and stuff like that. Oh, and, uh, true. Yeah. So, I mean, my I first guess everybody. My credit yes. card was sent to me. No application was sent to me my first year of college. Yeah, exactly. Because they want to get you while you're young. And then you've got all the all the school loans and everything. I don't know. People people really don't understand how how the world works at, when they're that at that age anyway. But to have the state actively working against them and the banks and their collusion, um, I don't know. It's it's just it's difficult. Yes, you know there should be even a class how to live on the least amount of money and be happy. How can you yes, be I happy so. if you you're working just jobs you hate and you get this paycheck and, and you're constantly uh, coming home from payday and your money's gone. And, and you know, and there's people like, oh, I, I'm happy with my job. And they're really struggling and they and they don't see this little trap. It's like a, a, a wheel in a hamster cage, round and round and round. And, and yeah. going nowhere fast. And I don't know if this is true. It hasn't happened to me yet, but someone had told me, when their parent died, they ended up with their bills. Oh, and, I don't know anything uh, about that, but that doesn't sound very good. Yeah, it's like, well, how can I be responsible for someone else's uh, charges? But I, I hope, I hope that isn't the norm. I hope that you know, if I die owing oh, money, that my kids don't get it. I, they're already inheriting uh, this governmental debt we have. I don't need them to inherit anything else I've picked up along the way on top of that. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, is there anything else you'd like to get out before we go? You know what? I think if we have time for another song, well, first let me just tell people, you know, if they want to kind of, um, you know, find out more about me, um, it's TatianaMoroz.com. 
Um, people can hear the new Bitcoin song on my, my YouTube, Forevermore Tatiana. I'm trying to raise money in order to do um, a full band version of that song as well as uh, a record. So if people feel like they want to donate and they like what I'm doing, they're welcome to or at least share it with people. That's always cool. Um, and then, you know, I've got uh, shows coming up for the New Year, Save Long Island Forum uh, in the beginning of January, uh, middle of January rather, and then a whole bunch of others that are being posted on my calendar. So people can check back in with me and keep in touch. I wish everybody a happy holiday. And, um, and, uh, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, anytime you see me on, call me. I would love to say, Oh, Tatiana came in. She's joining us right now. (laughs) Um, yeah. Well, um, maybe we should end with Auld Lang Syne. That's that New Year's song. It's such a pretty song. Maybe we could finish up with that today. That sounds wonderful. And uh, safe travels. Come home safe. Bring your coat. <laughs> oh, crazy. yeah, I know. I don't even have a coat. Somebody's going to have to show up at the airport with one for me. <laughs> oh, they better do it because you're going to freeze to death. Um, huh. And uh, if I don't see you and to, or talk to you before then, I know I'll be giving you the pod. But I want you to have a Merry Christmas and wonderful New Year. Thank you. You too. This is Tatiana Morose with Auld Lang Syne.
of kindness yet far dear oh 